What a week. From every conceivable direction, the news just keeps coming. It feels like the world is on fire, and in parts of our country, it literally is. Then came the news on Friday that our president and first lady and aides have tested positive for COVID. We pray for Donald and Melania, their aides, and for everyone across our country and across the world who has COVID, who loves someone who has COVID, who has lost someone to COVID, who has been impacted by COVID. We pray for healing and wholeness. We pray for all healthcare workers who continue to do such hard work. We pray for families who wait at a distance. And for 2020, this past week with all that it has held, has been more the norm than the exception. This was the week where I found myself in multiple conversations with people just hitting the wall. Lots of anxiety, lots of fear and confusion, lots of plain old distress. People are feeling overwhelmed. Any one of the things coming at us would be a lot, but to have so many things coming at us all at once it's just too much. People speak of not being able to think clearly, not being able to process information well. Everything takes 10 times longer than normal to do. If you're feeling a bit out of sorts, you are not alone these days. Many of us are struggling. And yet, even in our struggling, we gather. This is the week set aside for me as the rector to reflect on stewardship. And this year, that feels a stranger task than most, given everything that's going on. Last year, we referred to our annual giving process as a season of celebration and joyful giving. That language just didn't fit this year. It's hard to feel celebratory right now. But the language we did land on, a season of gratitude and giving, that felt right. Gratitude and giving, these are well within our reach. I honestly can't remember a year like the one we're currently living through, ever. And amidst all that is chaotic and scary and overwhelming and uncertain, our St. Luke's community has meant everything. We still come week by week and gather together to pray, to sing, and to engage the rhythms that ground us. As our 2020 milestone video and the reflections from last week testified to so beautifully, the pandemic has not slowed us down a bit. We have engaged with courage and creativity and deepened our web of relationships along the way. We have continued to look out beyond ourselves in service and have sought to live lives of mercy and justice. You have remained committed to this community in every way with your ideas and gifts and talents and perseverance and financial resources. You have remained committed to our community partners in every way. Funding Hospitality House, Community Care Clinic, the Hunger Coalition, and we can at levels we've never seen before. The Vestry has been diligent in their oversight task in these tumultuous times. We have endeavored to be good stewards of what you entrust to this community. This year, we took a big leap of faith in partnering with the diocese 
and bringing on the Reverend Anna Shine as missioner for college, third place, creation care and social justice. Little did we know just how much we would need the skills and focus Anna brings us. We knew this would be a financial stretch for our community and risk a deficit budget totaling just over $386,000 to get this off the ground. The charts and the mailing that went out this week helped to summarize what these funds support. But truly, the pictures we've seen and testimonials we've heard in the last few weeks bring to life what these dollars represent. As a community, we are meeting the challenges of the 2020 budget. And as the vestry looks to priorities for 2021, the vision is simple. Hold steady and support this leap of faith that we have taken. The one new item that we know we need to tackle is a worship tech support position to assist for three and a half hours a week on Sunday mornings. Little did we know in January 2020 that by the middle of March, we would be gathering online with all its technical challenges and opportunities. Truth be told, the church is late to this game. Educational and business settings have been exploring how to use technology for some time. And the late Phyllis Tickle, that wise prophet of the emerging church, saw this change coming years ago. It has opened up new avenues of ministry for us that are exciting. And with this shift, we've had to acquire equipment and now see the need for some dedicated staffing to pull off what we do each Sunday. As I sat to write this reflection yesterday morning, I opened up my Jesus Calling devotional book by Sarah Young. I highly recommend this little book for anyone seeking some daily grounding. The writing is from the perspective of Jesus. Listen to the first sentence for yesterday. When many things seem to go, be going wrong, trust me. When your life feels increasingly out of control, thank me. These are supernatural responses and they can lift you above your circumstances. If you do what comes naturally in the face of difficulties, you may fall prey to negativism. She closes her reflection with this. Affirm your trust in me, regardless of how you feel. Thank me for everything though this seems unnatural, even irrational. Gradually, you will begin to ascend, recovering your lost ground. When you are back on ground level, you can face your circumstances from a humble perspective. If you choose supernatural responses this time, trusting and thanking me, you will experience my unfathomable peace. As we think about the practice of giving this year amidst a season of gratitude and giving, the call to trust and thanksgiving helps us understand why this is so important. The antidote to fear and anxiety and uncertainty is trust. The antidote to fear and scarcity and a thousand not enough anxieties is thanksgiving. The practice of gratitude keeps us grounded in a sense that there is enough, especially when we come together as a community. The practice of giving reminds us that none of us can come through these times alone. We absolutely need each other. As we give, we mark in an outward and visible way that we need each other. We depend upon each other. 
And as we keep our gifts and our talents and our resources flowing, we join God in God's deep and abiding flow of love and provision. The alternative is to be consumed by anxiety and fear and to hunker down in our own little isolated lives. Trust me, on some days, closing ourselves off from the world sounds awfully tempting. But we know, like the Dead Sea that holds all that flows into it, that stance can become toxic. Life can't thrive there. So the practice of gratitude and giving feel more important this year than they ever have before. Just to keep our hearts and our minds and our spirits and our souls oriented to the source of life who provides more than we can ask or imagine. Now it's one thing to understand why we need to give and how it grounds us. But it's a whole other step to discern where to direct our giving. The 2020 milestone video and the reflections given last week and the letter that went out this week make the case for St. Luke's better than I can. I would only add that St. Luke's has never felt more important than it does right now. It is the anchor amidst these stormy seas that can help us to hold steady and keep orienting us back to our God-beloved true selves and our deepest values that flow from that place of infinite security. It has never felt more important to have a community who can lift our eyes up from the chaos and help us to hold fast to a vision of God's kingdom where all can thrive. It has never felt more important to have a community with whom to cry and lament and shoulder the burdens, and yet also a community with whom we can proclaim our gratitude and wonder for God's blessings and even rejoice. We need each other now more than ever. And for this community to continue to thrive and provide this space, we need your support in every way. As the mailing that went out this week makes clear, we do understand that these are challenging economic times. Each of us is facing a different set of economic circumstances. Some will be able to do the same level of support this year as they have in the past. Some will be in a position to do more, some less. And some won't be in a position to offer financial support at all. We get it. We simply ask that you spend time with the information in the mailing, watch the 2020 milestone video and the reflections from last week if you haven't seen them, Take the time to pray and discern what you can do, and then do what you can. We also sent this mailing to those who are gathering with us from across the country. We're so glad you all are with us, and we think of you as part of the St. Luke's community. For whatever support you can lend, even a one-time gift, we are so very grateful. In the mailing, we've provided a couple of blue worksheets to assist you in your discernment. These are for your use only. Please do not return them to the church. We've also changed the yellow commitment form this year to reflect the reality that we sometimes have seasons where we can't give financially, but we still have so much to offer. We hope everyone will claim the passions and gifts and talents that are uniquely theirs to offer. We want everyone to be able to return the commitment form and to celebrate the contribution they can make to this community. 
we've always said that we get this done together. We all have something to offer, and every offering matters. Next week, we'll bless all of our offerings, marking our gratitude to God and our commitment to one another and our commitment to God's work through us. I know there are challenges ahead, maybe harder than the ones we faced thus far this year. And I have every confidence that with God's help, we will meet whatever comes. As a community, we have so much for which to be grateful. And the way you have poured yourselves out this year is nothing short of inspiring. You have manifested the abundance of Christ in every conceivable way. Thank you for ensuring that God's love has never stopped flowing forth from this community. Even when everything got and remains turned upside down. And it is that love that will carry us forward from here.